Hello everybody, this is Pierre again, your ChemDraw wizard, and this is the second part of my ChemDraw magic tutorial. First I would like to start by saying thank you to all of you who watched and shared my previous video, and for all the messages that I got from many of you. For me, a lot of things have happened since. I was looking for jobs when I posted my first video 3 months ago, and thanks to its success, I got hired within a month as a chemistry field marketing manager at Perkin Elmer, the company that produces ChemBiodraw. And this is how I landed my first job. So in this second part, I will cover some more general tips and tricks and highlight the new features present in the latest version ChemBiodraw 13. The perhaps nicest one being the biopolymer tool that allows you to draw peptides or nucleic acids in no time, and that's what I used to write my job title. I know, I'm such a nerd. There are also new toolbars for actions like expanding labels, like this. And we can also switch for amino acids between single letter and three letter code. To show you how simple things are, I'm going to put up the biopolymer toolbar here and quickly draw the name of a famous science fiction movie like this select expand flip there you go so it looks like the first video has been quite helpful to many of you and i hope that by now you're able to draw molecules much faster there is one chemical drawing element that i forgot to mention previously and that is if you hold control when you have any cycle tool selected it adds a delocalized electron system within that cycle. So here is Lipitor. And then the lazy way, I'm going to type cholesterol. Select and then name to structure. And this is a small trick if you're handling large molecules that you have to join together. We can select these two atoms here and press Ctrl J to join them. And you can also do that with two bonds. This function will work well if the two molecules are pre-aligned correctly with respect to one another. That would make quite an interesting product now, wouldn't it? So we'll begin with a request from quite a few viewers, and for that I'm going to open a new document in ChemBioDraw. And I can guess, because I actually used to do it, that many of you probably change the document settings manually each time you open a new one. So I'm going to show you how to set things once and for all. For that, we'll go first to File, Apply Document Settings From, and select ACS document 96, which are probably the settings you normally use. And I personally prefer to have a document in a landscape format. So we can go to file, document settings, then page setup, and let's put landscape. Right here, you can also change the overall size of your document. We will now save this particular document style by going to file, then save style sheet or control S, and we'll name it ACS landscape and save. These style files are .cds files, and they are saved by default in the ChemDraw items folder. See previous video to locate that. Now we can go to File, Preferences, and in the Open Save tab, we can select the default sheet style that we want every time we open a new document. Here, ACS Landscape. We untick this option here and select the solid bond as the default tool every time we open a new document. Now we're going to close ChemBioDraw and open it again. And there we have our document in the landscape format. The solid bond tool here is directly selected. And zooming in, we can quickly draw a nice ACS looking aspirin to make sure the settings are OK. There you go. So among the new features associated with the biopolymer tool, you now have the possibility to paste entire peptide or nucleic acid sequences in FASTA format. Here, I have googled human insulin FASTA. I now go to Uniprot and select the B chain of the protein, for example, and I can retrieve the FASTA sequence here that I can copy. And now going back to ChemBioDraw, I can paste special as a FASTA peptide, and this way I obtain the entire peptide sequence with the numbering of residues. I will use that example to show an additional trick here when you're handling molecules that have similar labels. Let's say we have a couple residues here that bear the famous protecting group with a long name. Now, every time that you use the text tool, the last item you write can be reproduced by selecting the solid bond tool and triple clicking everywhere else you want the same label to appear. Now, remember, you have to actually use the text tool and not add label characters using a hotkey. If you're using many different protecting groups, my personal suggestion would be to assign them to the numeral keys of your keyboard. In my hotkeys file here, I use 1 for the FMOC group, 2 for the BOC group, 3 for the CBZ, etc. Remember that an atom hotkey will only add a chain of characters to the atom, 
and that independently from that, the chemical nickname has to be correctly defined. Coming back to the biopolymer tool itself, another nice feature is the possibility to manage sidechain links between different peptide residues. First one more trick here with toolbars. By double clicking on a toolbar in an area that is not highlighted, you alternate between the floating and docked configurations. So let's draw a good old ACDC tetrapeptide here, and I'll remove the display of Termini by going to File, Document Settings, Biopolymer Display tab, and toggle that off. Now I'd like to add a disulfide bridge between the two cysteines, so I grab the solid bond tool and simply draw a bond like this. To make sure, we can select, expand the amino acid labels, and clean up a bit. And things are not limited at all to disulfide bridges, I can contract back, and if I remove the disulfide bridge and draw a bond between the alanine and aspartate residue, the software will recognize the presence of the terminal amine and the sidechain COH group and will interpret that as a lactam. Again, we can select, expand, and clean up. And if the linkage you're trying to make isn't recognized directly, CamBioJob will ask you to define the connecting points yourself for each residue. Note that you can actually define single point connection labels quicker than by carving out the structure with the lasso tool. To do so, we will assign a nickname to the following biotin group. And just like you would do for a label with two connecting points, I am going to add the first connecting point here with a dot and directly select the whole thing and save as a nickname by going to structure, define nickname or alt s then n shortcut and save as biotin. Now let's say that you would like to add this biotin group on something quite substantial to draw and the integrated name to structure function isn't enough. You have the possibility on the Cambodia Ultra version to go to the online tab, find structure from name at chemacx.com and let's drive vancomycin again there, press OK and there you go. So again, if you wanted to create a quick nickname for that, we could go here, draw a bond and press dot Select the whole thing, Alt S then N, and then VCMY. And now opening a new document, we're going to check that everything worked well. So here, VCMY. And on the other end, our newly created biotin. Select, and then expand labels, and clean up. Unfortunately, CanDraw cannot synthesize molecules, and since I cannot even draw tryptophan correctly, well, the pleasure to prepare that molecule remains all yours. Talking about drawing tryptophan correctly, I'll use my previous mistake to introduce the new toolbars available in Cambydra 13. So here's my fake tryptophan, my tryptophake, and this time I won't make any comment on amino acids, and let's pretend that over a kinetic process of 3 months, it is slowly going to turn into actual tryptophan. And for that, I am going to disconnect here and reconnect correctly at the C3. Now we can put up the new Cambodia 13 toolbars from the View tab, which correspond to the Objects and Structure tabs. And there we have, for example, the cleanup function accessible within a click, so I can clean up my freshly prepared tryptophan, and the same thing for the flipping option, and you still have to hold Alt down when you click on it in order to retain the stereochemistry. If you are wondering how I am selecting molecules without touching them, I am just pressing my custom hotkey for the marquee tool, to quickly select the molecule that I either just drew or modified. In previous versions of ChemDraw, you could only do that by manually selecting the marquee tool from the main toolbar. Now coming back to the new toolbars themselves, you can save time arranging molecules in your reactions with the new cleanup reaction button. So with the marquee tool selected, I double click on the arrow and I can now press cleanup reaction or control shift X and all the components of the reaction will be evenly distributed. With this reaction selected, you can now also add a stoichiometry table by clicking here and quickly fill in all the details. Additionally, the Proton and C13 NMR prediction tools are available within the click, and you can also choose by going to File, Preferences, ChemNMR tab to switch between CDCL3 or Deuterated DMSO to give you more accurate predictions. And you can also now change the frequency of the spectrometer. Now one quick note about the hotkeys file for Cambodra 13. You can of course import your previously customized setup. However, there are a couple of differences in the Cambodra 13 hotkeys file that I will point out and my advice would be again to create a backup of the original file. When that is done, you can open it and copy paste the different command lines you have customized in, for example, Cambodra 12. 
Remember, the first section is for atom hotkeys, second section for bond hotkeys, and third section for generic hotkeys. You'll notice that there are two additional sections further down the file for the biopolymer tool to draw amino and nucleic acids. These sections and the corresponding biopolymer tool behave differently and cannot be customized like other drawing tools, so I would recommend not to try and modify them. In terms of improvements, the set of chromatography tools has been appended with the polyacrylamide gel tool that would be the TLC plate biological analog for proteins. And now for both tools, you can refine the shapes of spots or protein bands by holding shift with the TLC plate tool selected. For example, I know that this is what an ideal TLC spot should look like. However, that actually looks much more like me monitoring a reaction. Also new, the electron pushing arrows are available from the mass frac tool right here. So let's say that we have to write up a Michael addition reaction mechanism. We will need a Michael acceptor here, and to go with it, a Michael donor such as melonate diethyl ester. Select Control Shift N, and let's change that to the corresponding enol. Now we can put up the chemical symbols toolbar and add a negative charge over the oxygen, and we'll need a lone pair of electrons to draw the mechanism. We select the electron pushing tool to draw some arrows, and you'll notice that these specific arrows only allow for certain positions. Once things are set, the nice part is that we can actually move the nucleophile around and things remain connected as they should. Lastly, I will finish with the template tool and we'll see how you can create your own templates. For that, we're going to select the template tool and at the bottom, new templates, which will bring up this new window. Inside these squares, you can draw or paste molecules that you use frequently to have them readily accessible for later. And if you're dealing with a lot of molecules, you can add more rows or columns in the edit tab. You may also have to change the document settings within the template file itself. To go faster, I'll go to file, open templates, and open the template file that I have created with the molecules drawn in this tutorial, and I will paste our last example. The main advantage of templates over labels and nicknames is that you can easily reuse not only molecules, but also reactions, pictures, or text. When we are finished, we can save this as a template file, .ctp, such as for research purposes only, and save. And if we close and go back to our original document, we can go to the template tool, where there is now an entry for research purposes only. We can put it up and have it ready to draw. And this way, we can quickly access contradictory molecules, peptides that spell names, very large natural products, kinetically unfavored reactions, reaction mechanisms, or even a happy TLC plate. And the last new feature to go with all this, if you have a Dropbox account, you can now go to File, Cloud, Dropbox, and after a one-time sign-in, you can directly upload and download CamDraw files. Here I have already uploaded our last document and I can download it directly from my account. And this way, you can readily share your ChemDraw files with your colleagues over different computers. And that will conclude the second video. I sincerely hope it has been helpful to you and if you would like to know more about some other software solutions for research, I invite you to visit the Perkin Elmer Informatics website and sign up for upcoming webinars. I'll have a special acknowledgement to some chemistry bloggers, and these would be Derek Lowe from the blog In the Pipeline, Stuart Cantrell from the Nature Chemistry blog, and Cam Jobber from the Cam Jobber blog. Last, but certainly not least, I thank you once again for your attention. Please share this video if you have found it useful. Now keep on chem drawing, and have a good one.